Welcome back to school. I'm Denise with TCCN.ca. And right now we are going to go find somebody in the electronics and engineering department. Uh, we are here at the electronics and engineering department, and I'm very excited because it's my favorite part of the day because I get to play with robots. I love robots, just in case you didn't know. Did you know that? Well, I know now. <laughs> so why don't you tell me what, what got you interested in teaching this class and um, why, how long have you been teaching? Okay, I've been teaching for 30 years, and I have always liked building things with my hands. And I have also very much liked telling people how to do things, <laughs> explaining how things work, helping people learn things. So for me, the pleasure is in seeing students learn. Yeah, 30 years. That's, that's awesome. That's a long time. Feels like it's like that. <laughs> I guess time does fly when you're having fun, right? Oh, it does it ever. <laughs> so what are some of the projects that the kids do? I mean, we, we have a few examples down here. Um, I, there's tons of stuff hanging up all over the ceiling. Uh, why don't you give me an overview of what you do throughout the year? Okay, so my, my uh, philosophy of education is that in order to have students learn something, you should have them build something. And while they're building something they actually learn. So basically, I sneak the theory in <laughs> as they put these things together. Because if it were just straight theory, they would be so bored. Yeah, so they don't spend a lot of time staring at the, the whiteboard, looking at formulas. Right. So, so this is a combination of using your hands and your brain at the same time. And it's, that's how we learn. We learn because we have a goal, and we learn because we want to meet that goal. So looking at some of the stuff here... Um, Students are learning how to put together simple electronics kind of in, in a fun form by building like little characters and stuff. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So this is this is an example. So the students will learn in grade eight what these components are, uh, be able to visualize, identify them, uh, learn how to make a circuit board and learn the basics of electronics and then take something home that's a little bit catchy and flashy and say, hey, mom, look what I made. Right. <laughs> So how would this benefit um, people for their career, you know, if they were to take this course all the way through grade 12, what are they preparing themselves for in the future? Okay, so students who graduate from um, grade 12 and have taken the electronics and engineering courses, they have the basics um, required to enroll in a technical studies or a polytechnical or an engineering study. And of course, every thing that they learn in high school is somehow applicable to some aspect of their post-secondary training. Mm -hmm. So tell me about what the grade 12s do. In electronics, uh, they learn a lot about digital electronics, a lot about analog. Um, they, once again, put things together and make things happen. And in the engineering course, we, um, we do a variety of different challenges. They're divided up into teams. Those teams then are responsible for competing against each other and perhaps also competing against other high schools. Uh, one of the things we do is an electric uh, car. They have to build a vehicle that uh, uses a one horsepower motor and goes the greatest distance in one hour on one charge of batteries. So there's a lot of <laughs> thinking and building that's required to meet that objective. And what about the robotics? Um, I know you were talking earlier about um, what was it called, like VEX or VEX? Right. Recently, a lot of the schools in North America have adopted this uh, program where the students compete with each other and then compete regionally and then compete nationally on this robotics where they build this robot from a platform and they're required to put this together to perform a specific task. It could be uh, putting a certain colored ball in a bin within a certain period of time. Uh, uh, or some other like task like that. And so the students learn how to program, how to cooperate, how to work in teams, how to meet objectives, how to be on time, all those issues, right? Do they make killer robots? Well, they all want to build killer robots. They want to have something with a saw on it or shooting flames out or something like that, but <laughs> you know, we don't do that here. There are some schools that do, but uh, we don't, right? Now, you do some work with under underwater robotics as well too, right? That's true. I have an underwater robotics tank next door, and we, um, we teach them about buoyancy, all the physics that's involved in getting a submersible to stay down but not too long and they have to be able to pick something up carry it to another portion of the tank and all those issues right so they have to learn about making a, a, a motor waterproof and um, air buoyancy water all those things that they need to know. so there's a lot more factors than just doing you know building a robot for land true 
Well, cool. I'm interested in racing some of these robots and playing with some of these toys. So thank you so much for talking with us today. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Now let's get to the fun part. I put a record on You skip the needle to your favorite song had a lot of fun and I learned a lot talking to these teachers hanging out at the school and I hope you did too. We got to race robots, drill some holes, check out things in 3D. But there's one more thing that I got to tell you about. I'm not nerdy anymore. I got myself some ink.